I've often wondered, if used on the same location, which would catch most fish, artificial lures or actual baits? So I decided to put it to the test. Oh, yep, yep, yep. In this episode of Carl vs. The World, I'll be fishing against fellow YouTuber, the Ginger Fisherman, on his local river. We got it, we got it, we got it. This one has to stay on the hook. Today, we are going head to head. I'm gonna be fishing with bait, and Chris is gonna be on the artificials. Plastic lures, metal yep. lures, basically nothing that's actually edible to fish. Nope. <laughs> do you still feel confident? I'm, I'm quietly confident that I might do well today. I'm obviously got my small soft plastics for things like chub and perch potentially, and then obviously some slightly bigger baits for pike. Let's see how the day goes. We didn't have many rules, but fishing would finish at 7 p.m. and no fish under 25 centimeters would count towards our total length of fish caught. It was only my second ever visit to this river, but as Chris has known it all his life, the pressure was certainly on him to produce the goods. This is going to be super embarrassing when I don't catch it. <laughs> mm, that is a I will catch this pike. Got it. Fish on. <laughs> He's already hooked one. All I've done is put a worm on the hook and Chris has hooked into a fish. Brilliant pike, not very big, but got plenty of length to him for this competition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick him down in the net and rest him, and then we'll get a measurement on this fish and see how big he goes. Great start. He's had a 56 centimetre pike, and I've made one cast and my worm has fallen off. <laughs> good start, Carl, good start. Today's going to be my biggest challenge. Out of the Carl versus the world's episode so far, this one's going to be the hardest, without doubt. I'm going to throw in a couple of small handfuls of pellet to try and draw the chub and barbel up out of this tree. I've made a couple of casts with the worm, but they weren't very interested. But if I can get them feeding on pellets, I might be able to fish with a feeder or something to try and catch one of the big, big barbel. I noticed Chris was on the move. He was off in search of more fish. I have seen a couple down here, but they're not rising, so I'm gonna go out with a little hard bait. It's got a little hard bait with me, only a little tiny thing. And fingers crossed, we can come into one of them chub, or maybe even a good sized perch to take the bait. Carl's not caught anything yet. Ah, uh, so I'm already in the lead with that jack pike. Give me a moment, Chris. We've only been on the river half an hour. Perch, nice perch. It's a good sized perch on a little hard bait. Glad I changed over. Yes. Just got a fantastic perch, changed over to a little hard bait, a little crank bait. And it's nailed it, it's a really nice fish. Definitely over 25 centimeters, which is the minimum size. Probably about 36 maybe. It's getting measured. Just half a centimeter off what I said. 35 and a half centimetres. Oh, that reminds me, there was another rule, and it's that we aren't counting half centimetres. Sorry, Chris. So, how are things going in this challenge so far? Great. Incredible, in fact. If you're Chris, fishing with lures, life's good right now. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what to do. There's quite a lot of weed coming down. I have to keep picking clumps of weed off of the line each time I cast in. The bait stays in the water maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds before a bit of weed wipes out my line. Um, I'm not sure. I don't have a game plan. To make things worse, my next cast went straight into a tree. Oh, oh it's cold. Ah. Oh, now my trousers are wet. Just had to pull it a bit harder and it would have come out. 
As I was in the river already, I decided to drop my worms in tight to the reeds where I couldn't actually cast from the bank. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, that's a really nice perch. That's a proper one. Chris has got a fancy unhooking mat with a measuring tape on it, but I've actually just got my builder's measuring tape. That's at the tail, that is 35. That is an amazing perch and it's absolutely made me a lot, lot happier with this challenge. The only thing I've just noticed though is that there is suddenly a whole load of floating duckweed and clumps of dying weed coming down. I'm not entirely sure why that would happen. And the fishing was difficult enough as it was with the amount of weed coming down before. And now this has suddenly started. It could cause me problems. It could cause both of us problems actually. Chris was also snagging up on the weeds. He just wasn't moaning about it as much as I was. With his super accurate casting, he searched the deeper, slower water where predatory species like to hide. It's a nice tree there that's just dangling down to the water. I'm just gonna have a cast out with a pipe bait. Bit of a heavy end of the cast. There we go, oh, I missed it. I think that was a big perch. <laughs> I'm not joking, I think that was a big perch smashing into my pipe bait. I was beginning to realise what a challenge this was going to be. Yes, I had the advantage of bait, but Chris's knowledge of the river and the quantities of large pike around were stacking the odds in his favour. Oh, he's a bit bigger than I thought, actually. It might have been the big one from up there. Yeah, that's a double figure, that's a double figure pike. He's not interested. Yeah, that's definitely a double. <laughs> it's gonna twitch it. Oh, that was the big one I was telling you about earlier. <clears throat> He's not gonna have it. Never mind. No luck. Oh. A sock! <laughs> Catch of the day. Oh, we should do that. Catch of the day. Mm. I found a shoal of chub down by this tree. I'm going to fish this swim with the float because the fish have been super wary so far and every time I cast in, they're hearing the lead hit the surface and they're spooking off of the splash. So I'm going to trickle maggots in, lower a float in really quietly and then run it down to where the fish are a little further down the stream. That's the plan anyway. Ooh, that's got to be 25 cm. Oh, this swim is alive. Yes. I'm feeling a little more at home now, watching a float run down through the swim. I'm a little bit more used to this. Building a swim, loose feeding with maggots is a, is a great way to uh, stop the fish from being so spooky and start them focusing on where they're going to get their next mouthful of food. And that is a huge roach. <sighs> Look at that. Fish. Much better. Fish. <laughs> we got to try and remember 30 cm perch 26 yeah 25 on the nose mm -hmm. only just counts this one let's take the big one 35 that's points on the board that is mm -hmm. so we are currently on 179 centimeters Yay. good game Kyle. i'm not sure where, where where chris is at They turn for that. We have a wet net and two wet wellies. Oh, 
There we go. We got it. We got it. There we go. Another countable fish. Ah, beautifully done. Yet another long, thin pike put Chris even further into the lead. I was beginning to wish I'd brought some dead baits so I could target pike too. There we go. There's a perch. Chris is a master of lure fishing and watching his videos always impresses me. That said, it is still fishing and you can't catch them all. Got it, we got it, we got it. That's another pike. Oh, he's just barely hooked, just on the back hook. We got him. If you're wondering what I was up to at this point, then don't bother. Whilst Chris was bagging up, I struggled to even find a fish, let alone catch one. Oh yeah, I can see the I can see the pike. One of them. Yep, it's like hover finning over the top of it. Oh, got it, we got it. Yep, fish on, fish on. God, he went hard then. I knew we were going to have it. Classic trick, just let your law sit on the bottom and just twitch it. And it went down and slammed it. Fantastic fish, 73 and a half centimetres. Skinny pikes, it's uh, you know just coming out of summertime into autumn time. A brilliant fish to catch, and it makes up my total number really, really nicely. At this point, I'd never been further behind in one of these challenges. So, Ooh. upon hooking into a big fish on the float, here we go, oh. and then losing it almost instantly. You can probably imagine my frustration. That would have been my biggest fish of the challenge by a long way. As a last attempt before moving areas, I decided to float some bread downstream. That would be so awesome. <gasps> yes! Are you kidding? It came all the way up and smashed the bread on the surface. Okay, it might not have me caught up just yet, but that is a really nice fish. Beautiful chub. That'll do me. I don't think it's going to quite have me catching up, but it's not small. 42, 42 centimeter chub. Finally. Realistically, I needed a miracle to catch up with Chris. He then suggested we go and fish another part of the river, no doubt because he'd practically caught all the fish in this bit. That's not mine, by the way. That's <laughs> cows. It is mine. He needs it with him because we were staying overnight. <laughs> I took a short walk along this new spot before meeting Chris and totaling up the current scores. He seemed to think he was winning. I'm not sure why, but boy did he go on about it. Chris headed upstream and I walked down into the town and spotted some dark shapes from the bridge. A piece of floating bread seemed like the perfect approach. Yep, chop, chop, chop. Oh, that's a good fish. No! No! No, 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 no! Are you kidding? Thankfully, I got another chance before the fish spooked. There we go. I've caught one. Oh, finally. 36. I love catching chub on floating bread, but the shoal just refused to feed after that, so I had to explore elsewhere. Just minutes later, I found a barbel in some shallow water. I'm gonna get a chub. Don't want to catch the chub. All barbel. I missed it. I had the barbel for a second. I need to let go. Oh, I, need, I need to get him feeding before I cast in again. I've got a few fish taking pellets now. Nice ones too. Wow, look at them go.
See, this is the advantage that bait has. You can just trickle it into a swim and start drawing the fish in, getting them competing. And I've got five or six fish, chub and barbel, coming out from underneath that tree and starting to take a few of these pellets. All right, that's it. We're in such a good spot now. The bait is just under the tip of the tree. Oh, my bread has got a fish just swam over it. There you go. Oh, it's right on a fish. Yep, 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 there's one. That's a fish. That's a good job, man. Wow. That was so cool. That was a bit more slippery than I expected. Come to me, please. Yes. What are we saying, guys? Guesstimates. 50. 50? 45. 47. That is an amazing chub. Things are getting better. I'm catching more and I'm catching bigger. So I'm happy. To my surprise, the fish soon began feeding again and the barbel returned, but Chris had found the shoal too. I really would like more than just pike and perch today. I really would like to make it a bit more of a multi-species. Oh, that was a chub. Just turned away from the top water bait. It wasn't very big. As Chris tried again for the chub, I'd eventually hook to barbel, a much needed fish if I was to have any chance of winning this challenge. It's fighting so good. No! No! Oh! Really? Is this really happening? I lost probably the biggest chub I've ever hooked down there. I just lost the barbel. Not to be defeated, I tackled up again, but this time with stronger line. I was so impressed by the health of this little river. Never before have I seen so many perch, pike, chub and barbel living in such shallow, clean water. I landed a couple more chub before we decided to move again in search of some fresh spots. With time running out, I went all in and decided to target barbel again. I couldn't quite see the bottom, but occasionally a big fish would flank and sunlight would catch on its scales. Well, that's ridiculous. Another 30 centimetre perch. Yep. This swim is on fire. 32. To my surprise, this spot was packed with big perch, boosting my total length. I was sure Chris would also find fish around here though, so it was going to be close. <laughs> that's the barbel, that's the barbel, yes! Oh, that is indeed the barbel. Look at him go. This one has to stay on the hook. We were almost neck and neck, but if landed, this big barbel could secure me the win. Oh, it's a big one right on the edge. Yep. Oh. Spooked it. God, it turned, didn't it? It was clear that not every fish would properly commit when taking the lure. During this challenge, I'd really observed how lure fishing takes considerable skill to cast accurately, but also put the right action into the lure, making it move convincingly. Got it, we got it that time. Bait, on the other hand, was easier to use and opened up the range of species that I could potentially catch. I think for a beginner fisherman, bait is probably the way to go. And then try lure fishing once you've got the basics nailed down. I am so lucky today to get another chance with a barbel right near the end. I just have to get this one in the net. Go on. Get straight in that net. Yes! Well, that's amazing. Things are really hotting up right at the end. I don't think I've got very much time left. This is definitely putting a few centimeters onto my total length, but have we got time for another cast? I'm gonna to have to check my phone. I bet he has it. 
With only two minutes left of the challenge, one more small perch could make me the winner. Yep. We got it. <laughs> Lovely little wee jack pike. That 33 centimetre pike was enough to push Chris well into the lead, just as time ran out. All right then, Chris, good work, man. Cheers. I think the best <laughs> angler on the day uh, took the win. I know this river like the back of my hand. Yes. So if I was fishing baits today, uh, it, the margin probably would have been a lot, <laughs> lot bit larger. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Carl vs. the World. For more, click on one of the videos on screen now.